Here's what's coming up on your horizon. Well, Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays, a time when family and friends come together to give thanks for all their blessings. So this week, we meet some people who have lived lives with an attitude of thankfulness. Oklahomans from all walks of life who show gratitude by the gifts they give to others. This is a show I think you'll enjoy. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's investment in career tech provides more than nationally recognized technology education and training. It produces solid financial returns for the state's economic future. Oklahoma Career Tech, elevating our economy. And the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. And now, from the Career Tech Studios in Stillwater, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, by most any measure, Harlan Stonecipher lived a charm life. The creator of a multi-million dollar company, Stonecipher saw the pinnacle of corporate success. Yet things are never as easy as they often appear. Stonecipher's family has known their share of heartache, yet through it all, kept a focus on helping others. For Harlan Stone Cipher, early life was meager at best. But the only running water that we ever had was when I ran and got it. The son of a sharecropper, Stone Cipher went to college and married his wife Shirley, finished school, and was ready to begin a new chapter until his life took another turn. My lady turned off directly in front of me and we hit head on. Uh, I had automobile insurance on my car that replaced the car. Uh, I also had health insurance that covered me while I was in the hospital, but I wound up getting sued even though she got the ticket. Uh, she made an improper left turn, but uh, they still uh, filed a lawsuit against me. A devastating turn of events that wiped out Stone Cipher's savings, yet inspired a business idea. People every day uh, had unexpected legal situations, not necessarily just automobile accidents, but all types of legal things that happened to them that they were not expecting. And that's what I saw out there is such a large group of people, such a large market, uh, not prepared financially, not prepared emotionally for legal problems. And so prepaid legal was born, an international company where clients have access to a nationwide network of top-rated attorneys. A huge success for all involved. When I met Mr. Stone Cipher, I had just went broke and I had to have someone to help me. I sat down with Mr. Stone Cipher. He gave me an opportunity to be a winner and not to be a loser. Today, more than 1.5 million members pay a monthly fee as a form of legal insurance a multi-million dollar business model that goes back to one simple rule. Not to quit. I think that's what happens to so many people uh, today and in the past, is that when the going really gets tough, uh, they, they have a tendency to want to quit. A life philosophy put to the test. In 2005, a plane carrying Stone Cipher's son daughter-in-law and granddaughter fell out of the sky, instantly killing all three. And just everything was going pretty well and all of a sudden, you know, that happened and you, uh, you, can't, you can't visualize that. I can tell you that I, I got to the point of saying, I can't, I can't handle this one. I don't, know, I don't know how to get through it. And for days, that's, uh, that's the way we were. We just said, hey, this one, this is one we can't handle. Uh, we've handled everything else, but we can't handle this. Uh, this is just, just too much for uh, any one person. Yet despite such a tragic loss, the stone ciphers healed their pain by focusing on how to heal the pain of others. Somewhere along the way, we realized something that we had known all of our life, 
and had done all of our life that the best thing you can do to help yourself is to help somebody else. And so began the plans for a children's memorial chapel, a gathering place for grieving parents needing to heal. We began to realize that the, the greatest concern that parents have that lose a child is that uh, what's going to happen after we're gone? Are they going to be remembered? Who's going to remember them? I mean, this whole family was wiped out. I mean, our son, our, our daughter-in-law, and our little granddaughter, three of them, and that's it. I mean, that family's gone. It's just wiped off the, the face of the earth. And I found out that that's the thing that concerns most people that have lost a child, is that they are concerned about will they be remembered. So Harland and his wife turned to their pastor for guidance. The result? A new home for the Life Community Church and a chapel of remembrance. It's being designed specifically to minister to families who have lost children. And they've said with, with a great magnanimous attitude, we want this chapel to be open to any family anywhere uh, to be able to come and, and honor their children, not just our kids, but for any family. The Stone Ciphers donated $5 million for the project. The building, the pastor says, while not yet completed, is already healing families. And right over here, somewhere in this area, there was a couple that was writing the name of their daughter uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the concrete. And come to find out that those people are dear friends of ours. Their daughter passed away about five years ago, and she was um, mid-30s. She died of cancer. And about that time, Shirley and Harlan Stonecipher walked in, and I said, let me introduce you. I introduced the couples. I told them that they had also lost a child, an adult child. And immediately, Shirley goes over to this lady, and she hugs her around the neck, and they embrace, and they start crying. Right here, right here. There was no building here yet. We were just dedicating it to God. And she said, I know the pain you're going through. I know, what you, I know what's happening in your life. And, and God had already started the, the process of healing people's hearts before we ever got the structure in place. Now, in addition to the Memorial Chapel, Harlan Stonecipher was instrumental in the building of a new business school at East Central University that now bears his name. Now, in addition, the Stonecipher family awards scholarships each year in the name of their late granddaughter, Nikki. Now, Mr. Stonecipher passed away on November 10th, just months before the completion of what was to be his final gift to the town of Ada and the final chapter in a life well lived. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon, featuring some of the good things that are happening in the great state of Oklahoma. Well, for prison inmates, holidays are often the hardest. The separation from family and friends magnified. But thanks to a unique program called Muddy Paws, some inmates are finding some new best friends while preparing for life once paroled. Well, Lisa Hines has our story. First a shampoo, then a trim, and finally a blowout. These dogs are receiving the full spa treatment, and at the same time, they're helping change lives. Muddy Paws is actually a really great program. What we do is we give people and dogs second chances. We give women that have criminal pasts a second chance. We get, tra train them in new careers. You can either be a kennel tech, bather brusher, a pet stylist, or dog trainer. And Christy Van Cleve knows all about second chances. I have a little bit of a shaded past, and but I had dog grooming to fall back on once I decided to get my act together. Um, and a big part of it is, is that people that have been in trouble, if they're a felon, they can't get a job anywhere. And with that being said, you can't raise the family on minimum wage or dead-end jobs. So the best thing to do is to make a livable wage. If you can make a livable wage, then you have the means to change your life. A lot of people that don't do well with people do great with dogs. So combine the two and you have a win-win situation. According to Roy Peters from Pets Helping People, animals are a good fit for this program. 
Oh, pets are natural. This is just uh, perfect. Now, you could do this same kind of program with uh, auto mechanics, for example, or with cosmetology. But pets are so loving, they give love back, and uh, it's just one more reinforcement for the positive that our students get. A commitment that starts bright and early every morning. I leave really early in the morning, about 5.50 in the morning. I drive from out in Sand Springs, drive up to the prison, pick the women up, bring them to work in the morning. At the end of the day, drive them back out to the prison. And it is well worth it to go pick them up, to bring them here to our facility. Uh, I did go there and set everything up there, but it isn't quite the same. You really have to bring them here to get the full effect and teach them what they need to learn. But the ladies in this program, like Christy Dobbs and Ruby McClendon, it's a real lifesaver. It's given me a chance to um, build my self-esteem, build my self-worth. Um, it's just, uh, let's see, it's so hard to put into words, you know. For 20 years I've done nothing but drugs, steal drugs. And I don't know how to live a normal, uh, respectable life. So this is teaching me how to do that as well. But I know I've come a long, long way. And I'm proud of who I am today. And animals just make the job even better. The dogs, I love them. I talk to them just like I'm talking to you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just, I can't put it any other way than that. I just love the animals. I love working with the dogs. Dogs are fantastic. Just it's a fantastic job. I look forward to coming to it every day. It's that kind of enjoyment in their work that helps those who complete the program find a job and stay out of prison. We've had this program for four years now. And um, up until 2014, we've had a perfect rate. We've had nobody reoffend. As of January 2014, we have had our first women reoffend. We are now at a 96% recidivism rate, which is fantastic. So um, I'm very, very happy of our record. 96 recidivism rate is something to be very, very proud of. So that means teaching a career that they can make a livable wage is exactly what it takes to be successful. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of community and education to be successful in life. And that's all it takes. It just takes believing in our fellow man to know that all these people should not be forgotten about. They're just like you and I. And if we all pull together, we can change the world. Changing the world, one doggy do at a time. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, talking turkey with a Thanksgiving purist. But first, a Friday Night Lights success story. Well, advances in technology have revolutionized the television industry. Broadcasts that once were prohibitively expensive and technically difficult to produce are now part of some innovative classrooms. Joining me now is our Courtney May. Rob, at Deer Creek High School, the stars are both on and off the field thanks to a student-run program that streams sporting events for all to see. To Sims left, Sims rolling left, now fires a pass, back to the right, touchdown! The crowd roars and the cheerleaders cheer. It's Friday night at Deer Creek High School and Antler Vision is on the air. A live stream broadcast completely run by students. The broadcast is dependent not on just one person, but on multiple. And every person has to pull their part for the broadcast to work. And it really takes 110% effort on everyone's part to get the broadcast to look as great as it does. My name is Patrick Uton, reporting to you live from Antler Vision. Antler Vision started as a classroom of only five students and within a year has transformed into an organization of almost 40 students, live streaming multiple Deer Creek High School sports every week. Instructor Janet Harris. The team that I've got, the group of students, they're like a family. They get along so well. They have fun. They stay up for school all day long. They're here till 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And the team, including sophomore Riley Natley, considers Harris family as well. 
she's an amazing teacher and I've never seen anyone more involved with our lives and this program than she is. I love that about her. Sophomore Jimmy Griffin says Antler Vision helps him get outside of his comfort zone and he now realizes his dream job is in the broadcasting industry. I've gained a lot, not just experience-wise from feeling, but just great relationships with people. We all get along, we all kind of have our own ideas and opinions, but we just collaborate and work well together. Sophomore Chris White says Antler Vision offers real-world experience that you don't find in a typical classroom setting. It's truly great for the students, but it's truly uh, great for us as well because we gain so many life skills, uh, so many things that can help us in the technical world. An athletic director, James Edwards, says the organization is serving family members all across the world. It's been great for them to be able to um, produce this and our kids to actually be able to have grandparents and and parents and friends be able to watch this when they're not able to get to the game. Family members like defensive back Kyle Sanders' dad, who was able to watch his son play while in South America. It was amazing uh, to be, you know, 4,000 miles away and be able to tune into the game and know exactly what was going on. I couldn't be more thankful for the opportunity to be able to do that. Players also benefit from the broadcast, making the college recruiting process as easy as a click of a button. We do all kinds of features for the players. Uh, we have highlight videos, we have promotional videos. The players love it, it gets them out there. When they're going to college recruiters, they can just, you know, send them a link to a game. They can watch the game because all our games are archived on our site. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. And Antler Vision's Connor Bergen says getting positive feedback from the players is the most rewarding part of the job. Center them up, center them up. It's fun to go back to school and be with the same players. Whenever they look back on it, they're like, that's really cool, I'm glad that you guys did that. Defense, attack, get the ball back. Highlighting the efforts on the field while gaining valuable experience. Three, 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 three. It's great to teach students that have a real passion for learning and a passion for what they do. You get a sense of accomplishment and pride in what you do, and that's why I love doing this. It's a great feeling. I knew this program would be something great. Antler Vision students live stream an average of one to two sporting events a week and they are hoping with more people and more experience they will soon be covering a variety of sports up to three a week. And I understand their instructor has earned some notoriety for her teaching methods. Yes, Janet Harris won Career Tech's Teacher of the Year award at their annual conference. Harris received a $20,000 check from Express Employment Professionals with $10,000 going towards her classroom needs, which she says will be used for equipment in the new Antler Vision Studio. Well, certainly a great program and a great bunch of students I just happened to get to meet earlier this year. Thank you so much, Courtney. You're welcome, Rob. Now, a little later in our show. Yeah, come on, yeah, come on, yeah, come on. Woo! One hump or two on the Oklahoma Plains. Want to share something you've seen here today? Well, all of our episodes are streaming on our YouTube channel at Oklahoma Horizon TV. Or you can subscribe to our weekly free podcast on iTunes. Well, serving turkey is an American tradition around most Thanksgiving tables. But what we pour our giblet gravy on is a far cry from what our forefathers ate. But thanks to the work of one Oklahoman, that could be changing. Here's our Elisa Hines. It's a sound that makes your mouth water for turkey and dressing. But for Arliss Walters, it's the sound he hears year round in his own backyard. Arliss raises turkeys and is now trying to bring back a breed of turkey that no longer exists. A daunting task, but one he says keeps him busy. I just, something I like to do, a hobby, I guess. They're called heritage turkeys and are very rare. A heritage turkey is the older breed that's able to produce without artificial insemination. They do their own natural breeding. That not only look different, but taste different too. Usually a store-bought bird, they'll say a butterball or injected. What you're getting, you're getting whatever the taste that they inject in that bird. So these are naturally here birds, so therefore they got a naturally turkey taste. And the taste of a natural turkey is a little, quite a bit different than a store-bought one. 
And getting back to the original bird is no easy task. I've been working about five or six years on these. This is the sixth year on the bird trying to get it back to the original bird. I've still got a ways to go. That's because for over a century, growers have been breeding turkeys to be bigger breasted. And what Arliss's turkeys may lack in size, they do make up in hardiness. It's a stronger bird, more resistant to disease and things like that. But identifying the correct traits is a judgment call. Anything that's off color, you separate that out. Just keep the true breed. And if you don't make a mistake, then you always go in the right direction. If I make a mistake, pick the wrong bird, well, then I can lose five, six years worth of work. An all-natural turkey with an all-natural taste, thanks to some work on an Oklahoma farm. You can keep up with us throughout the week. Just head to OKHorizon.com where you can see more of any of our stories, read our reporters' behind-the-scenes blogs, see what others are saying about us on Twitter, and face the facts with our regular updates. So reach out and touch us anywhere and anytime. Well, over the years, I've occasionally heard someone described in a less-than-flattering tone as being all hat and no cattle. And while the gentleman in our next story may have neither, what he does have is a thriving business raising camels. J.D. Roseman introduces us. Oklahoma, land of big energy and big ag. And now camels? Camel here, camel! Woo! Woo! For Ralph Paso in Perry, Oklahoma, camels are the center of his ranching operation. My whole deal is do not get in the line. Everything I do, if I walk up and I go to get to lunch, if there's a line, I figure a way to get out of the line. Because you'll never be first when you're in the line. So if you've got camels, there ain't nobody in that line. Everybody's in cows or something else. And it's, it's just a good policy for life. Don't get in the line. So why camels? Well, we used to raise goats. And goats were a... Uh, a perfect thing. We raised Angor goats and we at one time had like a thousand head, but the coyotes really liked them. So what about Oklahoma weather conditions? It isn't exactly Egypt. The camels, they can take the snow, they can take the cold weather, the hot weather. And for Ralph's wife Winona, she even plays mother. When we have the babies, uh, it's usually from the end of December till the end of April when we'll have the biggest share of our babies. And uh, it's usually cold, so you have to get them out of the pen until the mother uh, is uh, ready to accept them. Until they are totally cleaned, uh, they don't want anything to do with the babies. Within about an hour, we'll try to give them a bottle. I try to keep the milk frozen that, so we'll have it at times when we need it. And then you help them to get up and get their legs strong enough that they can stand. And then when the mother's ready for them to be with them, then you can integrate them in with the mother. So what does one do with camels in Oklahoma? The female camels. We sell a lot of those for milking. Not something found on grocery store shelves. Yet, Ralph says the camel milk market is growing. Well, it's getting better, better, better because they did a bunch of studies and it's awful good for Alzheimer's, diabetes, autism. It, just, it's just a mighty, mighty powerful stuff, really. Yeah, camel, yeah, camel, yeah, camel and extremely profitable. Now the milk is going for $160 a gallon. Very profitable business. Making money and making friends. Nice animal to be around. All while running a farm in central Oklahoma. It's a growing problem few want to talk about. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we look at the impact mental illness is having on the state.
The biggest problem is our system does not handle mental health like any other health issue. And it is just like every other health issue. New attitudes about an age-old problem on Oklahoma Show for the Heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, at this time of Thanksgiving, let's remember those who work the land to make such abundance possible. The bounty that spreads across our table would not be there if it wasn't for our nation's ag producers. So as we pause to count our blessings, count our nation's farmers and ranchers as something to be grateful for, not just for this Thanksgiving or even next, but for every meal in between. I'm Rob McClendon. Thanks for watching. See you back here next week. Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. Thank you for watching Oklahoma Horizon.